Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you the Commissioner of Education for the great state of Kansas, Randy Watson. Get everything situated here. Well, good morning again. I'm not losing my voice. I'm still trying to find it after about the last week and a half. So uh, Carolyn told me if it, if it goes out, you'll jump right up here, Carolyn, and take over. So yeah, you know, we're I'm so excited. We're so excited about today. Uh, as Jim mentioned, the really start of something that, that Kansans have been waiting a long time and have been working for, for a long time, uh, a new vision of where we're headed with education in Kansas. And uh, Jim talked about, but I, I, I want to let you know, I, I have, I left this wonderful job in McPherson, uh, a really great community. Um, I had plans to retire there. I blame Janice Shaver, you know, for that. But I get the opportunity to work with some outstanding people, you know, and just like local boards, state board, they don't get enough kudos of the, of the hours and hours that they, that they work. And I just want to say, and for all of us to say again, thank you to the State Board of Ed for, for today and for where we're going. Thank you. And I would be... I, I, would, I wouldn't feel good if I couldn't also tell you that uh, along with this great staff that we have that, that are here and serving you uh, throughout the conference, I get the opportunity every day to work with two really, really talented people. You know, Jim introduced one of those, and that's Brad Nudeswander, um, the Deputy Commissioner for Learning Services, and the other is, is a young man that's just getting his career started, Dale Dennis, those of you that know Dale. And so, uh, you know, every, every Monday we get together and, I, and, uh, and, and, and try to outline how can we help all of you do your job better and easier and serve you. Uh, so, Brad, thanks again. Dale, he's in Topeka handling phone calls right now for all of you, so I just want to say uh, thank you um, once again. So we're here today to talk about the future. So I'd like for you to raise your hand if currently or in the next five years, currently or the next five years, you will have a son, a daughter, a grandson, a granddaughter, or a niece or nephew in pre-K through 12 education. Raise your hand. And just keep them up. Ken, I know, because you like to talk about your grandkids, right? They're the best things in the world. You look around, guess what we're going to do today? We're going to design a system for your kids. For your kids. Kansas, Kansas kids, together, together, we're going to design a system for those kids. So I think this quote I've shared with you uh, as Brad and I have been out on the road some, but I think this quote from Robert Kennedy, if you just read it and let it soak in, long after October 2015 and the annual conference is over, it's probably correct that few of us will remember who individually was seated in this audience. But maybe, but maybe if we talk about the things that we want for Kansas collectively, we can change the next generation. And Sean, your comments were spot on, and as Jim mentioned, you haven't seen anything until you've seen Kansas educators take on this challenge of educating every kid. So I want to share with you a little bit about what Kansas told us. We want to share with you the board's vision, by the which you voted on, Kansans voted on. 
A new slogan for Kansas education, some graphics and, and in general where we're headed uh, as, as we go forward. So we know this. You've seen this data, but it has to drive everything we do. It has to drive everything we do. If we don't change, the middle class in Kansas is disappearing. By the way, I'm going to digress just a little bit because I see Dr. Hams sitting here. I would, you know, I'm a proud bull pup. I'm a proud wildcat. But first, Jerry, I was a NATO. I was a tornado in Coffeyville, so I have to, I have to shout out to Southeast Kansas. So, and 71% uh, of the jobs when this year's eighth grade class graduates will need something beyond a high school education to obtain them. That is so different than a generation ago. That's so different, Jeff, than when you and I were roaming the halls at Delta Sig. It's so different. And we're, when we're nowhere close to providing that today, even though, even though we are one of the top 10 states, in many cases top five states in this country in educating kids, it's not good enough for this state. It's not good enough for your kids, for your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren, your nieces and nephews. We have to do better. And it's going to be extremely hard. That's why we have to do it together. So many of you have seen this chart. You don't have to worry about the data if you haven't seen it. I just want you to look at the aqua blue line. That's the number of the percent of kids going on to post-secondary education from 2007 to 2011. The uh, kind of the green bar, yellow bar, are the percent of kids that returned or graduated after one year. And the orange bar are those kids that went on to post-secondary that needed remedial coursework. From 2007 to 2011, I picked that five years for a reason, but I could give you the most recent five years, it would look just the same. It wouldn't look any different. The reason I picked this is if you look at that chart and you just look at the chart in general, what do you see? It doesn't change. Statistically, it doesn't change, and yet, in the last two years of that chart, you know what we did in Kansas. Teachers that stood up, you know what we did. We went from 40% proficient to almost 90% proficient on a state reading and math exam. And yet, no, more, no greater number of kids went to school after high school. We didn't cut the remedial rate at all. And so we've been racking our brain thinking about what we measure has to lead to the outcome that we want. Because under No Child Left Behind, while we did what we were told to do, and we did it really, really well in that era, it didn't lead to more kids being successful after they left us. It just didn't. So, you know, we went out across Kansas. I'm going to share that data. Brad and I have gotten to know each other more than two guys ever should. <laughs> All right? And so we like to call it the reunion tour. For those of you that watch Nick at night, you can feel free to sing along. Come on, get happy. Actually, Brad and I like to joke about this because it's obvious the state board's running over us. They're a little impatient. Okay? Get this done. Lots of news wonder. Get this done. You know? Before we even had a chance to launch this, and this honest truth, Chairman McNeese sends me a note and says, Randy, be thinking. You and Brad be thinking about the reunion tour three. <laughs> I said, Jim, we haven't even launched the vision yet. All right, reunion tour three. So we went out. And we did what Kansans do. We spoke to you and said, what do you want in your educational program? And here's where we went. 20 different communities throughout Kansas. I remember when we were in Kansas City, we were asked by a young reporter, why would you go to Parsons, Kansas, and all the way to Sublette, Kansas, and to Oakley, Kansas, and back to Coffeyville, Kansas, 
And Brad and I looked at her and said, are you from Kansas? And she wasn't. This is what we do. We go talk to people about what we need. Yes, we had it online. Yes, you could do it online. But we went out and we talked to people. And then we found out we didn't have enough business participation. Many of you are here today to support. We just didn't. We thought we would. And so we saddled up again. And we went back out to seven different locations, uh, different communities. The only one we repeated was Wichita, just to get business input. Just to get business input. And here's who made up the communities. You can see we had over 1,800 responses somewhere in this, in this crowd. Actually, along the, uh, along the wall over there is a gentleman, Tony Moss. And, and, and Deb Mercer's here too, the Dean of Education at Kansas State. Tony from our agency in Kansas State have been working on this data because you know what all of you did? You just wrote things. And we had some way to figure out this qualitative analysis. So Tony, I want to publicly thank you. Deb, we want to thank you in Kansas State. Largest qualitative study conducted at Kansas State. Over 1,800 participants. And this is what you told us. What makes up a successful 24-year-old in Kansas? What are the skills, attributes, and traits? And you said 23% of what makes up a successful Kansan are academic skills. 70% of what makes up a successful Kansan are non-academic skills. Maybe we'd like to be healthy physically and mentally. Yeah, it's important, especially as you get older. Employed, for those of you that still have kids in your basement, right? You know what I'm saying on that? Or maybe some kind of credential. And loud and clear, you said to us, you said to us, Randy, we're kids, our kids, that you raised your hand, are more than just a bubble sheet standardized test score on one day. And while that's important, it's more than that. And can we get back to reality of, of what it's going to take to do all of that? So that's what you told us. Then we went out to business, as I mentioned. We thought this was instructive. You know, they say small business are where most of the jobs are going to be created in Kansas. And 50% of the people that came out in the business community were small business owners, 1 to 50. However, 17% had over 500, 500 employees. So we had small, we had large businesses, and we asked him the same question. Business leaders across the state, what makes up a successful 24-year-old Kansan? And guess what? Now those of you that know me, know I like a little graphic that I'm not showing today about people chopping down trees and being in the wrong forest. I really thought that they would tell us, can they just count back change? Which is why you should tip greater at Sonic Drive-In, by the way. Can they just use a tape measure? And they told us that, but they said, we have to have people that show up at work on time, have good work ethic, know that they're not going to be CEO tomorrow. Right? And all of these things that, that we used to get on the farm, we used to get by part-time jobs, but we're not getting as much of now. And then we ask him a, a second question. Well, then, if this is what you want, what's K-12's role in this? And it was clear from all of our business partners and all of the education community and from our parents, they said this. Before we get into the details, they said this. This is not an education problem. This is a Kansas problem. Businesses said, I remember Brad and I were in Lawrence, and they said, we will stand and help you. We will do whatever we can to help you. This is not just your problem. Parents this, have said, to, this is not just a school problem. This is what we all have to do to get there. So I want to go through a few of these things with you and then talk about what the board's done. So 
These are the things I think that lead us toward the change that we're going to start to see in education. And we're talking about a cultural shift. How many of you started your teaching career after the year 2000? For you veterans, look around. You only know one system called No Child Left Behind. And we're going to have to change a culture of said, after Christmas, if you're a fourth grade teacher, you need to go into test prep mode so that your kids could do well on a standardized test that, by the way, did not lead to any other kids being successful after high school. So here's what they said. School climate has to change. And so here's what you can do today. Here's what you can do today. The class of 2016 is waiting. They could care less about any arguments that the adults have in the room about all the educational issues, they want to graduate with the hope of having something after, after they get out of our high schools, and they're looking to us to do that. They're looking to us to provide that. And this year, when you honor the class of 16, when you have the student up on stage and the parent opt, like we had this morning with the young people on the artwork, and you say, this is one of our top kids in our class, and she's planning to go to KU to major in pharmacy, pre-pharmacy. And there's a photo op, and right next to that, we've got an arm around a young lady who's planning to go to Hutchinson Community College in a two-year degree program to be a physical therapy assistant. And as we honor her, the young man comes up, but he's going to Wichita Area Technical School to become, and has a full scholarship to become a welder. And what Kansans, what you told us is we've treated one of some of those kids that are not going on a baccalaureate like they're second class citizens. And they're not. They are not. They are just as important as the student like myself that went on to, to be a teacher at Kansas State. We need all of those kids to go on to post-secondary in fields that they're extremely interested in. So that's, that school culture has to change. We have to career plan earlier, truly career plan, so that kids have a better idea of what they want to do when they leave us. Not to lock them in, but to help them understand what that's going to look like. Family engagement, truly change family engagement. You know, in my latter years as superintendent, we'd run parent-teacher conferences in McPherson, and we get the administrators together afterwards. How was it? Well, only about 40% of the parents that showed up. And were there the 40% that we needed to see educators? No. Right? We could have mailed that in, right? I was at Emporia High School, and some of you saw me tweet that. And George and Teresa are here, and maybe some others from Emporia, Andy. And Britton invited me over and said, come and see what we've done. Two years ago, they were running 27% attendance at parent-teacher conference. All they did was a subtle shift where they focused the first 10 to 15 minutes in a scheduled meeting with their advisor to talk about their plan of study. And last year, it went from 27% to 80% attendance. That's family engagement. That's changing what we do that families want to engage in meaningful work. Community collaboration. That's why all of, all of the VIPs here, we can't do it alone. We've got to work with the communities. We've got to work with Lake Flanders, Kansas Board of Regents. This is not about just us trying to heavy lift. This is about all of us having to do the heavy lifting. Individualized instruction. You know how hard that's going to be? That's going to be extremely hard. How do we do that and have a system that does that? You're going to have to tell us. We're going to have to work through that. Real world instruction. Get kids out and actually experience what it's like. How many of you ever know, oh, I want to be a nurse, I want to be a nurse. We get them out in a hospital or in a clinic setting. We're drawing blood and they pass out. Probably not a good career choice. Just, just, just saying. Project-based learning. 
And we know all the challenges with that. Most of our parents and kids don't want it. They're pretty successful. And yet, I will tell you, in any one of our schools today, while we're being extremely successful from anywhere from about 60 to 90 percent of our kids, there's somewhere between 10 and 40 percent that we're not touching. That's why we're going to solve this. That's why we are going to solve this. Not someone else. We're going to. Early childhood, I'll come back to that. Got to start earlier. Biggest bang for our buck. And then a whole host of other things, including, including better collaboration with higher ed. Blake and I and, and, and staff are working on several initiatives, including a course that's being piloted right now that if passed in high school, will get you directly into college algebra. That's almost an amen moment right there, right? And extracurricular. You know, Jim talked about a teacher. I happened to hear just recently from uh, a, a choir teacher that grabbed me and, and uh, stuck me in choir, uh, a guy that can't sing at all and really changed my life. Extracurricular activities can do that. 4-H, Boy Scouts. We were at, we were at lunch, la or dinner last night. We were talking about Eagle Scouts. 4-H, FFA. Those are leadership activities. They're doing some great things. Change the definition. When you walk out of here today, talk about, drop the word achievement and talk about student success. By the way, you raised your hand about your own kids. How many of you have multiple kids, grandkids, nieces and nephews in school? How many have multiple? So I assume all of them are the same, right? Right? Cindy, all your kids are the same, right? Huh? Have you ever have you ever sat around, you and your spouse, and go, how did they ever? Are these are these our kids? Are these our kids? What, right? They're extremely different. Student success, achievement makes up part of student success, but not all of it. Academics are very important. But it's not the only thing we have to worry ourselves about. We have to look at each child and how do we help him or her become more successful. So some takeaways. This is what the research said. We may have to redesign curriculum. We've got a little group working on that. We've got a lot of little groups working on that. How do we do that? How do we redesign curriculum? Real world experience. New roles for school counselors. Or we may have to hire some, because we cut a lot of them. We cut a lot of them. You know, I asked a young lady just recently who was at Pittsburgh State. She graduated in uh, a very fine school in the northeast part of our state, and said uh, to her, uh, I said, can you tell me how often you saw your counselor? She says, yes, I know exactly. It was that senior checkout. Because, you know, that's, you know why, Jeff Allman, you know why, because our, pu our, our counselor to pupil ratio across Kansas is about 400 to 1. You ever try to spend quality time with 400 kids? You want to. This is a systems problem. We're going to have to spend more individual time with families and kids. Brad's daughter's getting ready to, to leave, graduate from high school this year. He's getting to experience the post-secondary ride right now, all right? He's been doing this his whole life, and we've been talking. This is hard stuff to figure out even when you know what you're supposed to do. A large proportion of the skills that we need have to be how do they, they make use of those skills, okay? Some other things. All these soft skills, these non-cognitive, social-emotional, like conscientiousness, are important, but how do we measure them? Ugh, got to be careful how you do that, or you get unintended consequences, right? We don't want to go chase something, do it, and find out it's not what we need to do. We got to constantly ask ourselves, is this the right forest? Is this the right work? Project and task performance, this is what Kansas told us. Individual planning, curriculum design, work experiences, internships, are more important measures than traditional assessments. Can every kid have that experience? 
Post high school measures, credentials, employment, well-being are very important. So, the Kansas school superintendents, some other people that are here in this room, see Michelle here and others, worked very hard with the state board a couple of years ago, probably more than a couple now, <laughs> time flies by, to develop a definition that if you look at it today, is so appropriate to where we're headed. That you have to have these skill sets. And what we learned as we went on the tour, these skill sets are important. You need to add citizenship in there. It's really the only one that came out that wasn't there. Being a good citizen, being a part of it, we need to look at that. And so, as you know, here's the board's vision. And you voted on that. 81% of Kansans said they like this vision. We're going to lead the world. Lead the world in the success of every one of our students. Every one of them. And know this. Some of us won't be around to actually see that happen because it won't happen tomorrow. The journey starts today, but it won't be done tomorrow. When John Kennedy stood before the United States and said, let's land a man on the moon by the end of the decade, he knew that had he lived, he still would have been out of office by the time that we did it. The work that we have to do today, we have to ensure that future generations will prosper from. The world. I hope you gasp just a little bit. This is not an easy task, but we're going to do it. We're not going to wait for Washington to tell us. We're not going to wait. We're going to do it together. So the state board's gotten together and they've started to say, here's some ways we're going to measure. It's like when Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon, we knew we were there. How we know when we get there? This is a work in progress. All right? First of all, every kid's got to graduate high school. 71% of the jobs require post-secondary. Guess what if you don't graduate high school? Do you know what the odds are? Percent? What's the percent if you do not graduate high school that you will ever live in the middle class in your lifetime if you live in the state of Kansas? You know what, you know what the odds are? 8%. You like that for your grandkids, your kids? Eight, so is it impossible? No, Steve, it's not impossible. But I'm not betting on those odds. I'm not betting on those odds. Post-secondary completion attendance. You've heard in the conference, we're awarding more certificates right out of high school. Great. We need more CNAs, CMAs. We need more uh, welding certificates. We need more construction. We need more auto techs. We need more kids going on to Pittsburgh State and Fort Hayes. We, know, we need all of that. And we need to lower the remedial rate. It's costing us way too much money. And you know the gatekeepers college algebra. So look at those three in combination. Right now we're at 85% graduation rate. We've got to raise that. We've, we're, we're at about 78% of kids that do graduate going on anywhere post-secondary. And Ray, you know that's not enough. You've told us it's not enough. And then when they get there, almost a third of our kids need to take remedial coursework before they can even get anything that counts for credit. So the state board said, we're going to look at that. We're going to start measuring ourselves against that. How about this one? How many of you think pre-K education is kind of important? You know what the state board said? I, I think we have the longest discussion on this. It is extremely important. But we said, well, how do you even know? So this is a different, different measure. Different measure. So Denise at Wamigo just simply takes a snapshot of when they enter kindergarten. And if 90% of the kids that are entering kindergarten are kindergarten ready? 
then probably at Wamego we don't need to look at many resources to help. But Jerry, I mentioned Dr. Jerry Hamm, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a great building. It used to be Whittier Elementary School. It's now the Dr. Jerry Hamm Early Childhood Center, rightfully named, where every kid in Coffeyville in the very near future, because of Jerry's efforts and Barry Downing and, and Craig and many others, are going to have universal three and four year old where they didn't have before. The change before we ever start kindergarten. So we're going we're gonna to measure to see what work do we need to do on the pre-K side. That's all it's measuring. It's not measuring whether we're successful. Are we, what work do we need to do on the pre-K side? An individual plan of study focused on career interest. We've got to have that. How important is that? I've been doing this 34 years. 34 years I've been, do, I've, I've been in some capacity in education. And every day that I get up, I get the opportunity to do what I love, which is try to impact students and their, and their future. Now, I've told the story, but I think it's so important because stories illustrate where we can go. My son is on the autism spectrum. And while, when he was a sophomore, his art teacher came to his mother and I and said, he is extremely talented and you probably want to get him some additional support outside of school that we can give him at McPherson High School. Well, if you've seen, I have no artistic ability. I have none. I, you, I can't even draw a stick person right, okay? I can't do anything. And so two years later, he says, hey, I got a plan. I'm going to go to Savannah, Georgia. Now, I want to tell you that this, my son does not leave his room all right, he didn't go to prom. He, hey, you want to go to a ball game? No, I don't want to go to a ball game. And now he announces he's going to Savannah, Georgia. Really? And I look at the price tag, Blake, and I went, really? How about Hutch? I think that's a good idea, okay? This does not have any chance of being successful, all right? In June of this past year, he graduated in four years with honors. Why? Because his plan of study trumped his disability. He wants to be an animator so bad that he put up being 17, no, 21 hours away from McPherson, Kansas. Now, he called every night, all right? But it's important that when we link that together, when we find someone's passion, whatever that is, whatever that is, Commissioner, Social emotion. Commissioner Watson, with all due respect, we hear what you're saying, but we think should, today should be about us, the students of Kansas. I'm a what? senior. I know communication skills are important, but sometimes I'm intimidated to advocate for myself. I need someone to help me explore my career options. Who can help me learn about Kansas technical schools if I want to become a welder? Come on down here. Come on down here. Hello teachers, faculty, and staff. I am a high school junior Thanks and I have found a gift for helping others learn. Imagine what can happen with teamwork and collaboration. Who can work alongside me so I can learn more about becoming a teacher? Commissioner Watson, I'm a freshman and I have no idea what I want to do with my oh, we love those. after high school. Who can help me identify my strengths and set goals to help me achieve my dreams? Whether that is becoming an aerospace engineer or a dental assistant. I'm a senior and I've always been a top student in high school, but what if that's not the case in college? Who can help me learn persistence and know how to dig it and teach me how to dig in when it gets tough? The business community agrees that having a strong worth ethic is important. Who can help me build a strong worth ethic so I can succeed in becoming a certified nursing assistant? I'm a high school sophomore. Who can help me explore my creativity so I can attend college to become a graphic artist? The number one thing that will make us thrive in Kansas is to provide world-class education to each and every child. Whatever it is, we want them to problem solve it and attack the situation, have the confidence and feel prepared to do it. 
Every child is looked at as an individual and every child is given the right and the opportunity to succeed. Really what it means to make sure that every kid is prepared is that they have the opportunity to dream and that they have the skills to realize those dreams. When I grow up, I hope to be a singer or an actress. We have to maintain our commitment to programming like the arts, choirs, bands, all the other things that we don't necessarily think of as core areas. We have an opportunity before us that the State Board is setting forth that says test scores are important but they shouldn't be what drives our work. What should drive our work is what our kids need, who they are and who they can become. Not only do we have a strong literacy, communication, math skill foundation, but education and educators instill a hope, the ability to dream something bigger. We're not just applying a standard to all kids, but we're looking at where they are in, as individuals, and we're helping them grow, and we're helping them achieve. I know a lot more Spanish. I didn't know how to read, write, and now I do. We have quality administrators, school board members, state board of education members that are wholly dedicated to the cause of public education. What I like about my teachers is that they're very kind and they're very helpful. Kansans can lead the world in student success as we focus on the needs of our kids and we think forward and we're innovative and we allow ourselves to dream with our kids and to make sure that their supports are in place. Kansans can do anything we put our minds to. Kansans can make all things possible. Kansans can achieve anything they set their mind to. Kansas can do anything. We've been joined this morning by not just these six outstanding people, but some outstanding students from Wichita West High School. Can you give them a round of applause? <laughs> They're passing out some lapel pins as our slogan, Kansas Can, so that we can reach, be the, lead the world in the success of every one of our students. Today is the beginning, the beginning of a very, very hard journey. But if you ever think, anyone in this room ever thinks, we cannot accomplish this, I want you as you leave to think of these young people. and the people that you raised your hand for, and know that we will not fail in this journey. We're gonna leave you with a young lady who's extremely talented. Ken Willard actually introduced me to. She's gonna play some music. We're gonna hear her music. You can get it on iTunes. I told her I'd give a shameless plug uh, for her. And we wanna ha have a great rest of the conference. And thank you for being here today. Thanks. Thank you very much. You are welcome to leave.